Alright guys. Looks like I picked up some more stuff here, huh? Uh, some of this stuff I got at a... There was a little garage sale here just around the corner. Oh, I got this little... It's all rusty and just a mess, but it works. Still moves. You can clean up that little C-clamp. Those are always handy for doing setups or something. A little bearing here. I'll show you later what I got planned for that. I want to make a little tool for helping set up stuff in the lathe. Bob, this will be handy for you. You know, if you're doing like little small discs in the, in the like a three-jaw chuck or something like that to get the run out of the surface of it. Anyway, that. Let's see, set that down here. I got this little... I'm not sure what this is. Is that ready heat? Uh, oh, fancy heat. Sorry. It's hard to read it through the camera screen here. But I found this. Same place. I can open it. It almost looks like a can of Sterno, sort of. I can't get it open with one hand, but you open it up, there's a little wick in there, and this whole top piece is all formed out of one piece. And there's even little vent holes in this, so I think I'm going to try to make like a, a spill-proof oil can out of this thing here. I might have to keep that in mind, guys. Fancy heat. That's pretty much a perfect can. I've seen a lot of guys making them out of like, uh, oh, I think Tubal Cain made one out of a can, can of chicken or something. Anyway, we got that. That little bearing, the C-clamp, and this was what really caught my eye. A whole box of insert tool bits. And I haven't checked them all. The, quite a bit of these are carbide. There's a couple of them that are broken in here, but there's all kinds. Up here in this left corner, There's those are threading ones. Uh, just a whole different selection of them there, so I figured, well, I can't really go wrong on this. I think you can even sell the carbide used if it's worn out. You know, there's a market. For, uh, recycling that I guess it's an expensive material anyway well, I got that whole lot of stuff for five dollars so that was a pretty screaming deal let me get all this stuff kind of out of the way here I need a bigger table for doing this job huh? and then the other day my father-in-law he came over oh I'm sorry I forgot this piece here too this is a really nice old cast iron level and all the all the bubbles in it are still good. It's hard to find these actually, but the bubbles that are still good in them. But I might take this one apart, clean it all up, paint it. You know, I don't know. Maybe we'll send it over to Stan Sikowski, maybe, and have him surface grind these these faces after it's painted. Make it look like brand new. Oh, there's a little crack right here. Can you see it right there? Little tiny crack. That's all right. It's unusual that it got cracked in just that one little spot. Anyway, so there's that. So anyway, my father-in-law came over and he brought me a whole bunch of stuff too. These big long uh, clamps, which got like you know, like faucet knobs kind of for clamps. I've seen these sort of clamps before, and these are uh, the T T C or excuse me the C T Tool Company. Yeah. Anyway, those are neat. Uh, kind of more of a woodworker's thing, but I do a lot of that sort of work too. So we got a set of four of those. One of them's a little shorter, I think, than the other three. This is a short one right here. Got a pipe cutter here. I guess that's a Holland's brand, huh? I think it's an aluminum body. I don't know, I'll have to put a magnet on there. It's, I don't know, it's pretty heavy yet though. Maybe, maybe it's steel, I don't know. Anyway, so that's pretty neat. Got a nice big C-clamp there. And then one of the more unusual things that he brought over was this thing. That's a C-clamp with another clamp, like, made into it, kind of. And I couldn't really... I gotta look into it and see. It says there's a patent pending here. <laughs> I imagine that probably they didn't need to worry too much about that patent, because you sure don't see these anymore. Anyway. And then, uh... You also had this here. It's a vise that bolts to the table. It's a pretty nice little vise. That's about 10 pounds of cast iron right there. That's definitely not the right screw that goes there. We'll have to remedy that, find something that looks a little more appropriate. Yeah, what else do we get here? Oh, this thing here. I wonder if anybody can guess what this thing does. I'll see if I can move it. But you see the uh, 
when you turn this handle, see the hole moving? Yeah, it's not coming out very well. Anyway, it oscillates back and forth, but it slowly rotates, you know, it moves a little bit further one direction than the other, so it, you know, it's rotating like this, but it's slowly working its way all the way around. And this is for lapping old style valves on like uh, old hit and miss engines and I don't know, probably Model T's and stuff, it's sort of like in the 20's and 30's sort of era. Uh, these are, you look at these things up on eBay, man, they go for like 75 bucks or something like that. It's kind of ridiculous really, but yeah, it would be kind of interesting. Maybe I might open this thing up and then we can look and see how the guts work. I always wondered how that mechanism worked. Oh, it's missing a piece though. See the slot here? Get that to focus. Yeah, there we go. See the slot, and that's a pinhole. There's supposed to be a little flat blade kind of thing. It's sort of forked. Kind of goes like that into there, and then it moves like that. And that's that's the way you're supposed to lap a valve. You're not supposed to just spin it, you know. Uh, anyway, the other thing you brought, you brought over a couple of hand saws. This is the better of the two. Uh, it's. I'm pretty certain this is a distant saw, and I'm, it's either a number 12 or a 112, I want to say. And yeah, I know it ain't going to come up in this, but I can tell that there's an etch on this blade. I'll have to look it up again. I know there's a way you can clean it up and try to get that etch to show. Um, I'll have to do that. But the neat thing about these old blades, you see how thin it is here on the back? If I can get it lined up. I mean, it is a very thin blade. And... They would taper grind these things. So down here at this end, right, at the very tip, the rounded corner there, that's the thinnest part. And way down here at this end, that's going to be the thickest part. And they do that so that you have more room in the cut. And you don't need to have as much kerf, and that gives you a much smoother, smoother cut. I just hope that this, this uh, rust that's on here hasn't pitted the blade. Because you can see it's actually... Well, let's see if we can find it. You can see it's kind of almost shiny there, right? When they were done with the surface grinding, they would actually polish the blades on these old ones. And again, that reduces friction. and makes these a whole lot nicer to use. Unlike, uh, you know, if you go buy most the modern handsaw at the store, uh, I can see why nobody would want to use one because they, they're just terrible. The seal, steel is no good. A lot of times they'll induction harden the teeth. So they'll stay sharp for a long time, but once they're dull, you've got to throw the saw away because you can't sharpen it anymore. Uh, but here this thing is, and, you know, I've got I've got saws that are, you know, 100 years old probably, and, you know, they're still good users. Uh, anyway, so all that stuff he just gave me. That was nice. And, uh, oh, Bob Mullins, if you're out there, I don't really know if i got much use for this. It's a, it's a piece of deer hide. I mean, it's really, actually, really nice material. Buckskin, I guess you would call it, right? Um, I have no idea where he got this from. It's kind of a lot of holes in here. But there's still some good usable material. I don't know. If you got any ideas for what you might be able to use this for. But, uh, oh, sorry. Lay this out, I guess, a little bit here. There we go. It's really soft. I mean, you can see this is. If it was a whole thing, this would have made a really nice, nice jacket or something probably. But anyway, yeah, uh, might make a nice like a uh, little pouch for like chisels or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for the score for this week. Oh, well, I've got more, but I'll post another video. All right, that's all for now, guys.